Hello again and welcome back to the Fatfish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and in this video we're going to be talking about compression effects. Now compressors are probably one of the, the less well understood types of effect pedal. Certainly judging by the questions I get from, from people, you know, they, they might come and say you know, questions like what's the difference between an overdrive and a distortion or what type of modulation effect do I need? Should I be getting a phaser or should I be getting a flanger or a chorus? The qu kind of questions suggest they already have an understanding about the, the sort of general sort of sound that you get from those effects and what they do. Compression on the other effect, the qu kind of questions I get is, well, what exactly is a compressor? Why do I need a compressor? So th from that kind of question, I'm going to think, okay, it's worth explaining exactly what it is that a compressor is doing and how it affects your guitar tone. Now for this video, I'm going to be using this pedal I've got down on the board here. It's the MXR Dynacomp. A fairly mainstream, not super expensive, not super budget compression pedal. A good yardstick to demonstrate what it is that a compressor can do. And in terms of guitar, playing this, it's a Fender Custom Shop 1955 Stratocaster with the Custom Shop 50s pickups in it. And without any effects on, it sounds like this. <laughs> some compression sounds like this okay so as you can hear there's a difference there but it's pretty subtle to be honest if you listen to this on like a cell phone or a tablet or just some laptop speakers to be honest some of the subtleties in the the sounds won't really come across you need to be listening to this on headphones or some decent quality speakers really to, to, to get the most out of the sounds on this video so yeah compression effect it's fairly subtle it doesn't radically change your sound the way that a an overdrive pedal or a, a flanger or a phaser or some old wah wah pedal or something would do it's only thing it affects really is the volume of your guitar signal so if you think about it, you get to, when you're playing your guitar, you've got a waveform really going from the guitar into the uh, into all the various bits of electricery that you've got down there. And the waveform, really simplistically, looks kind of like this. And if you pick your guitar a little bit more softly, the waveform will look something like this. And if you pick really dig in, pick a bit harder, the waveform is going to look more like this. It's getting bigger in the, in the y-axis. You, you've got more, what well, you've got, physicists would call more amplitude to the waveform. You know, it gets more, more volume, so the signal is louder. And what a compressor does is kind of give you a, a, a more set level to that volume. If you've got a signal going in where the, the waveform is relatively uh, low amplitude, so it's relatively quiet, so if you're picking really, really softly, what it'll do is actually increase the volume of the signal to bring it up to a uh, to like more like normalized level. And if you're picking really, really hard and you've got a very loud signal going in, what the compressor will do is actually bring the, the signal level down and make the signal quieter to get it down to that more normalised level. Now, a really good way to demonstrate this actually is with another pedal that I've got on my board down here, which is the full tone plimsoll. So I'll just turn the compressor off and turn the plimsoll on. Now that gives me a, an overdrive sound. What's worth looking at is this second LED on the pedal there, the one uh, just above the stage two knob, I think it's labelled as. Yeah, stage two. Now this LED shows how the second gain stage in the pedal's reacting. Don't worry too much about what's actually happening inside of the pedal itself. But if I just play a chord from soft through to loud, keep an eye on what's happening in the stage two. <laughs> Yeah, so you can hear the as I'm picking there, it starts off quite quiet and it's getting louder. And you've got a visual indication there, which is useful for the video. The stage two LED on that pedal kind of shows you the extra input level. You can see how much um, signal is going into the second gain stage. So if we play the same thing again, so starting off really quiet and then going up to something a lot louder, picking in, digging in really hard with the pick. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, now it, what you should be able to hear it, hear it anyway, but there's not as much dynamic range to my picking, and certainly you can tell by watching that LED. Even when I'm picking quite quietly in that second example using the, the compressor pedal, you can see that light starting to come on, come on quite strong, more or less straight away. Whereas in the first example when I was picking quietly, it was barely flickering because there wasn't as much signal going in. And that's because the compressor is boosting the, the quiet signal and bringing the lower signal down. Towards the end there, when I was really digging in and playing hard, you weren't getting the the, like the emphasis so much because the compressor was, was bringing the signal level down. So that's what a compressor does, is it basically evens up your volume top, the, the volume level, sorry. So let's have a listen to the way that the, the compressor can affect the, the sound of the guitar. Let's go back to a clean tone. And this is the sound of the clean guitar. And then this is my sort of preferred setting on the compressor. I think the best way I can kind of describe this, it gives you more of like a, a rounded sort of pop to the to the picking tone. And a phrase I've heard about compression is it's like overdrive for your clean tone. So I've heard the guys on that pedal show, you know, Dan and Mick will talk about this uh, on occasion. They'll be using compressors and say it's like overdrive for your clean tone. So. To kind of understand what that means, if, let's look at what happens with uh, an overdrive signal. So if I've got a clean signal going into my, my, my amp, and then I put some drive onto it, what's happening with that, that overdrive effect basically is it's adding gain, so adding, it's boosting the signal in effect within some, some electronics within that within that pedal. So if you think about this as the signal coming in, it gets boosted beyond a threshold, so we start to, to lose some, some signal at the top, and that's where distortion comes in. And that is an effect that we talk about, that it's compressing the signal, so you're losing stuff off the top and the bottom after the boost happen, happens. And it gives you the distorted signal, but it's got a degree of compression. So if I just play on a clean signal, you're getting the same sort of thing happening with the compressor. It's, the way that it's compressing the, the volume is a similar effect to what's happening inside of a, an overdrive pedal. But the compressor is working in such a way it doesn't actually distort you're just getting the compression effect, which is sort of part of the, the 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 sound effect that you get with overdrive. So there's a in that respect, there's a, a little bit of overlap between drive pedals and uh, and compression. So if we take a look at the controls on this particular compressor, we've got output and we've got sensitivity. Output really is just setting the the, the level of the signal that comes out. So you know I was saying that we'll, we'll raise the, the the quiet signal and bring the, the loud signal down. What the output is, is setting is, well, where do you want these signals to kind of normalize to? Do you want it to normalize to something quite quiet or do you want it to normalize to something loud? I find with this guitar and this particular setup, set at about, what's that, halfway between one o'clock and two o'clock is about right for me. And the sensitivity control really affects how easy it is to make the compression happen. And it's, I find that the best way to describe it is the, the lower sensitivity, the less you hear the compression effect going on, the higher you set it, the more you hear the compression effect going on. Now, I'm not really an effect, uh, a fan of just turning everything up to full whack just for the hell of it, but it's probably a good example just to show you as an extreme setting. Put the sensitivity up to full here and let's hear the, the compression effect working in full. So again, for reference, here's the unaffected signal. And then with the compressor. So quite a, 
I know, get a squashy sort of sound. It, it's, some, it's, it's, it's really hard to describe sometimes because when you're, when you're playing, you're getting the interaction between yourself and the guitar and the effect and what you're hearing in your ears and how it all, it's all happening in the room. You do feel, certainly I, I, I do feel that I can feel the compressor affecting my, my tone. Now that's a bit of an extreme setting, but you might recognise that sort of sort of tone. You hear it a lot in country playing. Certainly, if you want to play like modern country guitar, Telecaster, compressor, slapback delay, clean Fender ramp, and you're good to go. That sort of snappy sort of compression effect. <laughs> Is really common in country sort of country play. Another really good example of where a compressor works very very well is the introduction to "Shine On You Crazy Diamond" by Pink Floyd. David Gilmour's guitar sound on that is just absolutely fantastic. As it is on so many things he does, he always gets a really really good guitar sound. But the the intro for "Shine On You Crazy Diamond" is quite a heavily compressed guitar tone, and it just works. The sound on that just absolutely works because of the way that the compressor works. I don't think it would be half the, the sound that it, it is if you didn't have that compressor there. So it's, it's, if you haven't heard it for a while it's worth going back and checking it out. So do you need a compressor? Well it depends on like, so what, what, what style you want to play. An important thing to mention though is a compressor because it evens out inconsistencies in your, in your picking. You know like I was saying before if you play really quietly it'll boost the signal. If you play too loud, it'll bring it down. If you've got a bad picking technique, using a compressor can help to overcome that. If you've got a bad picking technique and you go out and buy a compressor to alleviate the problem with your picking technique, shame on you, you are weak. You need to pick, get your picking technique right. Using a machine to overcome shortcomings in your playing is is wrong. I would never encourage anybody to do that. Work on your technique. Don't use a, a machine or a pedal or something as a as a crutch to to help you help you get better. In fact, that's one of the reasons I've I kind of shied away for a long time from using compressors because when I'm playing, uh, you know, I do quite a lot of like blues playing, and I like to be able to really really dig in and be expressive and use like picking dynamics as part of my playing and I find that a compressor takes that away because I can, you don't want to start off playing something really quiet and then really dig in to emphasize later on that effects completely lost with a compressor because it'll be boosting my quiet parts and bringing my, my louder parts down so it doesn't really work for me that said in the right place the compressor works you know it's not always the right tool for the job, but when it is the right tool for the job, it works particularly well. Just for the hell of it, let's hear how that, uh, that compressor works with a, a distorted or an overdriven signal. I'll go back to the compressor, I'll just dial in my regular sort of signal, where the sensitivity is about here. So this is the clean sound. <laughs> put in a bit of overdrive from full tone plimsoll and also let's have a bit of boss blues driver so just the overdriven sound on its own and with the compressor There's a difference in sound, but it's not drastic. It's not like the difference between sticking a, an overdrive pedal into a clean signal or putting a heavy phasing sound onto a, onto any, anything like that. It it's a subtle change, but like I say, it can be quite effective. Now, one thing it's worth mentioning is as well as about what compressor can do to the sustain on the guitar signal. So if I just play a note without the compressor. The 
sustains quite nicely uh, from this guitar. If I put the compressor on though and pick the, the string with the same sort of uh, attack, here because it's boosting the the quiet signal a little bit the, the sustains a little bit more you can get more dedicated more specialist units than this like compressor sustainer which has got controls on gear more to being allow you to really boost the sustain on, on on notes but here because the the compressor is able to lift the volume of a, a quiet signal it means as the the signal the signal from the string into the pickups is starting to die off and you're getting a weaker signal from the pickup the compressor is able to boost that signal keep it at the like the normalized level so the, the, the sustain will be a little bit more the thing is when you get to the point where the, you've reached kind of the sensitivity of the compressor sometimes the drop off is a little bit more a little bit more sudden kind of you can get to the point where it can boost the signal and now there's not enough signal for the compressor to work with and you just drop to the very low signal again and kind of the signal can come off a bit of a cliff edge. Depending on the particular compressor pedal that you're using, that effect might be more or less pronounced. It just depends on the unit. Like I say, the MXR Dynacomp that I'm using here is kind of typical, but depending on the sort of compressor that you use, your results may vary. Don't think I've got really much more to, to add about compression. It's not a particularly complex effect. All it's doing, like I say, is changing the volume. But hopefully that's cleared up some of the questions people ask about, well, what is a compressor? How does it work? Do I need one? That, that last one is the, probably the most difficult to answer. Do you need one? Well, only you can really decide. It's about understanding what the, the pedal can do, understanding how it interacts with your guitar signal, the sort of effect that it has on your sound, and then you can make the judgment about, is that the sort of thing that I might want to happen? in my guitar signal chain because it'll make the sound of the guitar like something that I want to hear. Like so many things in guitar, it's kind of subjective. Okay, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please click like down there. And if you really enjoyed it, there's also a button down there to subscribe to other videos that I uh, post on the Fatfish Guitar Studio YouTube channel. If you've got a question or a suggestion for a future video, anything you want to ask me about guitar effects, guitar gear in general, music theory, guitar playing, anything like that, then if you go here, fill in that form, send your question in, I'll try and get around to answering it in a future video. You're welcome to leave a comment down there below, but to be honest, I don't always see comments that get posted on YouTube videos, so if you've got a specific question, the best way to do it is through that form, because that will come direct to me, and uh, there's no risk of your question going unseen in the comment section. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in another video next time. Bye for now.